What's going on, everybody? Welcome into Northern Life. Happy to have you here with us on this Wednesday. We have some semblance of normalcy here. Yeah. You got Ryan Four back. Yep. Love to see Ryan back, Good of course. Uh, it's been fun hearing about your cruise uh, yeah. throughout the whole uh, kind of breaks and in between cruising. things. And yeah. you're cruising on in here, and we're going to talk more about that in a little bit. But we're missing a big, important piece yeah. of this whole yeah. show, and that's Briggs. Briggs. She had a baby. I know. She had a baby. We got to talk a little bit about it yesterday with you all, but uh, we are so happy. Little baby Wells Aww. is here and now in the world here in the Northland. I mean, talk about a little northern life. He is such a little bundle of joy, and I've already seen a couple pictures that Briggs has sent to us. It's It's been really special yeah. to uh, get to see this uh, new baby in I, our world. I think Wells uh, is now eliminating Harry for being the mascot of the show. Whoa. I think Wells has to be the mascot of this show from now on. What a sweet little baby, and keeping with your tradition of very unique names yeah. in the La Savage family. You yeah. got Graf and Briggs and a it, bunch. It, it flows well. We got uh, yeah Briggs, uh, Gates, Gates? Uh, Briggs' six, sister Gates, yep. and then uh, Wells. And Wells. Yeah. Wells is in there now too, yeah. so pretty darn cool. Congratulations, Briggs. We can't wait. I'm sure very soon we're going to yeah. see live in studio mm -hmm. this baby, and it's going to be very cool. Now you're going to be stuck with the two of us <sighs> for a couple months here. Hopefully Wells likes us <laughs> <laughs> when, when Wells meets us. But yeah, you're stuck with us now until probably mid yeah. or late January. So. so Wells, if you're watching at home, Good to see you. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We love you already, buddy. Harry and CJ, if you're watching too, you're doing all right. There you go. Uh, and after posting the picture of Wells on our Northern Life Facebook page, we saw a ton of support, which they'll love to see from all you wonderful viewers out there. Uh, let's get to a few of those. We had Sarah who said, congratulations from Ely, Minnesota. What a sweet little fella. Oh. Uh, next, we had Linda who told us, Wells is adorable, Briggs and Mac. Can't wait to meet them and also wishing them congratulations. And then finally, we had Kay who wanted to tell Briggs, congratulations to you and the hubby. You have a beautiful blessing named little baby Wells. Love that name. It, it is, is a great name. It's a very unique name. I absolutely love Wells. It's a very cool name. And like I said, we're probably going to see him sometime soon in this studio. Yeah. I'd say within hopefully the next month or so. We'll see what so. happens. Yeah. Also, uh, Hunter McCullough, not a new shirt. I thought it was a new shirt. No. Uh, uh, very nice, though. Thank you. This you is actually, good. this is the second time. I've worn the shirt, yeah. and I accidentally bought two of the same shirts. Oh. So I have, uh, hopefully they don't wear out as fast. You know how like the collar starts to wear off and things like that? Sure. A little button up here too to what keep the collar, the collar in place. What are you doing the collar to wear it out so far? Uh, just a lot of ties and a lot of, <laughs> lot of business, you know? You never know what's going on. Just looking too good. <laughs> Yeah, the bright lights just wearing it down. Exactly, man. Uh, I mean, we're you know we're moving. We're an active yeah. group of people. Yeah. Not so much. But uh, listen, we got a lot going on on today's show. Rachel o is testing out a carpet cleaning product that comes out of a can for this week's Does It Work product. We'll also get to a viewer photo involving tons of Halloween creativity and learn what you should do with the leaves in your yard. We got a lot going on here, Ryan. It's going to be a good show. But yeah. first off, of course, we talked about this briefly earlier, but sounds like your cruise went off without a hitch. It sounds yeah. like it was a lot of fun. Yeah, it was my first ever cruise. Uh, here's the thing about cruises. You you could eat all day if you wanted to. Because <laughs> <laughs> it's inclusive, right? And all it, the food. All the food is inclusive. Oh. I had to ask my girlfriend, who has been on a number of cruises with her father before, <laughs> I said, what do I do with my plate? And she says, you just leave it. Oh, my gosh. You just gosh. leave your plate. You leave your cups. If you want more French fries, all you got to do is go up to the ninth floor, the Lido deck, and say, oh. uh, I'd like some of those. Uh, so fortunately, we did walk around a lot because uh, otherwise I could have spent, you know, all day uh, eating or uh, gambling at the casino on board. Uh, but it was a lot of fun. Uh, it, you're almost like a wild animal, just eating and throwing stuff wherever you want to do it. And oh my gosh! And like you said, how, how, what's your average of steps that you walked every single? It was day? about fifteen thousand. Yeah, that's yeah, ridiculous. A couple, and then it was mostly uphill too. Oh my yeah. gosh! Yeah. The so, uh, terrain in Italy and uh, Greece uh, very uphill and rocky. <laughs> yeah, so. so you got calves of steel right yeah, now. Yeah, I mean I'll. I'm sure them off later. Maybe, maybe not. You gotta do a blindfold with shorts or something so we can see those puppies. We'll, we'll keep it a family friendly show for Wells out there. Uh, I apologize for showing this video again on this show, but I was not here to commentate on uh, uh, what Hunter did the other day. I saw you finally got to try Ludafisk. Was it for the first time? It was for the very okay. first time, and I, I knew the day was coming because I've lived up here my whole it life. It kind of went down okay. It did, you know, and I took a big bite too. That was an enormous bite. It was, I, I'm like, I'm going all in if I'm gonna do it. And honestly, the way it was prepared, I'm guessing it's probably the best form of it that it could be. I Look like at that. your eyes right here, kind of questioning uh, why you even made that decision. 
<laughs> it was kind of ridiculous. I was kind of, honestly, I was forced into it by the KQ guys. Yeah. You know how those guys are. But, uh, <laughs> yeah, it ended up being okay for the most part. Okay. I didn't, like, you know, nothing came back up or anything yeah. like that. Uh, ideal. Yes, yeah. ideal. And, honestly, the flavor was okay. Mm. Now, I wouldn't seek it out every single day of my life, but it was it was something that was okay. Have you ever tried Ludafisk before, I've Ryan? tried it before. I think uh, I've tried uh, pickled herring, too. Oh, yeah. Oh, man. As a kid, though, those things are, uh, you go, why would you even try that? Yeah. But as a kid, you know, even with, like, beer, you smell beer as a kid, and you're like, oh, this is terrible. Yes. It's but an now, acquired taste. As an adult, you're like, give me a beer, and maybe give me some Ludafisk. Yeah. So maybe yeah. once we get into, our, like, our 50s or 60s, we'll kind of be all in on the Ludafisk, eating that all the time. Do you still not like pickled herring, though? Uh, I haven't tried it in a while. Oh, maybe a, I'll have to update my palate. It's a delicacy, man. I, oh, yeah. New shirt, rubbing my name. <laughs> anyway, it's it's very, very good. you gotta you got to have some again sometimes. Also very good. I know I give you a lot of flack on the show sometimes. <laughs> yeah. But uh, <laughs> your holiday decorations you've put up. I got a Snapchat notification the other day. Uh, it showed me that Hunter McCullough has already put up his Christmas decorations <laughs> in late October. <laughs> but i got to tell you, I don't know if you did this or your girlfriend did it, but uh, it looks fantastic in your house. You, uh, honestly, I did like the I did the decorating above that arch over there, and sure. she did a lot of like putting the lights on the tree. So she did a good chunk of like like what looks the best, obviously. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's not even Halloween, but I just I want you know yeah. I love Christmas, it and looks great. it takes a lot of work to set it all up. Yeah. Why not have a couple months to enjoy it, and maybe by Valentine's Day I'll take it down. Yeah. We'll see what happens. It looks here. good. It Thank looks you. good. You I got the you, you got the Yule log on there, uh, but watching TV apparently has changed a lot uh, in the uh, times for Americans and. Here in 2024, uh, Dish Network has a new uh, study out showing some of the highlights of our TV watching. <laughs> and apparently 60% of the respondents who took their poll have uh, admitted that they watch TV from the bathroom. Now I wonder if that counts on the phone too because people watch... I think watch it probably it. does. Okay, because that does happen quite a bit. I know downstairs we have a TV in one of our bathrooms and if you're, you know, taking care of business in there, it's a nice place to go for a long time and watch, you know, the KBJR. Northern Life. Northern Life if it's on, so it's perfect. So if you're watching us, we're, uh, you know, you wash your hands. <laughs> Thank you. Please Let us do. know. Yeah. <laughs> Hope you're having a good time. Uh, coming up, get your dog what they've always wanted. How about some Crocs for them? We'll check them out next on Northern Life. Welcome back, everybody. Uh, shoemaker Crocs. Uh, you like Crocs? <laughs> Big fan. Huge yeah. fan of the Croc Crocs. boots. Yes. Uh, they may have found a new niche market for their popular shoes with some doggos out there. Okay. So the company has introduced Crocs designed for canines as part of its Croctober campaign, which I think is a fantastic <laughs> name. And so far, they are a hit. In fact, at $50 a pair for those dogs, the new line has already quickly sold out. So if you want to fetch your pet a set, you will have to wait until they are back in stock. And if you're worried about missing out, you can sign up for notifications through the company's website. That's a little steep, I'd say, for Croc uh, oh, shoes. But everybody should partake. The dog, well, the I cats. Think, I think actually uh, it looks like if it's $50 a set, you get four of them because obviously, you know, dogs have four legs. Oh. So it's almost like $25 a pair. Now that's, so does that make it better in your eyes? It does because normal Crocs for humans, yeah. for all the humans out there, I think they're like 70 Shout or, out if you're a human watching our, our show. Human. It's like 70 or 80 bucks, I think. It's a really expensive. Where are you buying your Crocs? Uh, the human store, wherever I get those, you know, it's, it's, but I also have, we like, got to do some research and look that up. I, 70 to $80 for Crocs is a little steep. I don't think that's, I don't think that's the price. But I have like water ski feet. I've got 14, size 14 oh, wide. Oh, so maybe they're specially ordered. They could be specially ordered. Gotcha. I should double check. I can't verify that it is 70 to 80 bucks. We'll look during the break. We'll, we'll pull a director, take a look at the break sort of thing. We'll see what happens take after Take a look this. at the break. <laughs> <laughs> hey, we should take a look at this next product. How about this next product here? Let's dig into this week's Does It Work product. Rachel Hagbarth is back showing us a can of carpet cleaner that's priced at 20 bucks. Yeah, much be, cheaper than... Uh, well, it's steep, though. It is steep, but much cheaper than my Crocs. Let's see if it's <laughs> worth the cost. Denise Hall is in the business of keeping carpets clean. She's going to see if the Bullshot Carpet Spray can help her customers with maintaining the look of their floors. One can costs $20. The makers say this product removes even old stains without any bending or scrubbing. On things like this that come from, you know, it's a one-shot deal, but it definitely hopefully will help in an emergency or things of that nature. There isn't much to the instructions, just spray. They do seem pretty clear. We're going to see how well this spray can work on cranberry juice and coffee. Too difficult to remove stains. So let's try it down the middle and see what happens. And it does say to wait. About a minute. About a minute. Even with Denise not spraying very much, she says she's seeing a decent amount of improvement already. Yeah, I can see that it absolutely is taking the stain up. The more she sprays, the more stain goes away. 
in this case, it's like the second pass. You can see more is coming up. Denise thinks the stain will be gone with a couple more sprays. It is doing a good job. She thinks it does a good job removing new stains, but what about the old ones? The company promises to remove those as well. I'd probably saturate it with a little bit more than what we did in the other room. Denise says there's a difference. Oh, it absolutely is coming up. Although she would not describe this carpet spray as being inexpensive, she believes it still could be useful for those times when you cannot call the professionals. I think it's a great in-between appointment. Anything that you can use to keep the carpet cleaner in between appointments is perfect, and this looks like it does a good job. For Does It Work, I'm Rachel Ackbarth. Decent, you know? I, uh, decent. 20 yeah. bucks is a lot for that, though. That it's is just, a lot of money. It could spend a lot less on are, pine salt or something. <laughs> we use pine salt? To, I don't know if we use pine salt to get stains out. Or bleach? I, I think know. pine salt is used for hardwood floors. <laughs> I probably shouldn't clean anything uh, out. We it. also did look it up. Uh, Crocs uh, range in price from 30 to uh, $90. So I could be but right in the middle there. The $90 but... was more designer, uh, you know, fur added inside of your Crocs the, type thing. Yeah, the LeBron James yeah. uh, <laughs> style Crocs or whatever, you know? The high-end <laughs> yeah. fashion designer. Well, let's get to a few uh, unhappy customers. A new lawsuit is accusing Subway of grossly misleading customers by advertising sandwiches that contain at least three times as much meat as it truly delivers. According to a proposed class action lawsuit filed this week in federal court, Subway ads for its steak and cheese sandwich show meat bursting within, reaching about as high as the surrounding bread. However, in reality, according to several photos in the complaint, Subway sandwiches are far more bread than filling. Uh, in their defense, that's everything. You look at a McDonald's advertisement and it's so thick with yeah. everything and juicy and it looks so big and you get it and it's, it doesn't look anything it's not like, that. like that. It's still good, but yeah. I mean, it's definitely, that's every kind of place. So you just like gotta kind of take that with a grain of salt. Coffee, uh, pizza, yes. you know, usually the pizza on the advertisement looks really good and you get it, you go, uh, that's not what it is. No, it's yeah. not, it looks nothing like it, but we still get it and we still <laughs> enjoy it, Ryan. It's kind of like Northern Life. You look at a photo of us and you go, wow, I really want to join those guys. <laughs> <laughs> the product is not, we should have a disclaimer at the bottom of our, of our line. The product uh, images does not uh, reflect what actually we do. Please don't sue KBJR no, TV here no. at Northern News now. <laughs> we'll give you something else. Uh, let's get to a nacho average dessert out there. Nestle Toll House Cookie Nachos has put a sweet twist on a beloved game time snack. The brand that's been baking up memories in the kitchen for more than 80 years, launching a partnership with legendary quarterback Peyton Manning to, to celebrate the news in a deliciously memorable way. The Toll House is presenting these cookie nachos, a fully customizable and shareable dessert that combines two iconic foods, cookies and nachos, into one. Why hasn't this happened before in life? I think this might be, uh, yeah, as our director Shania pointed out, I believe it is just cookies, but they're in the shape of nachos. Okay, so really it has nothing to do with nachos except no. that it's cut in the shape of, okay, well, that's still like cool though. Hey, yes. You're not putting cheese and sour cream on them though or anything like that. Have you tried? I mean, I haven't. I bet salty with the sour cream is pretty good, honestly. That might be pretty good. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Uh, yeah, but uh, that might be the uh, part of the false or misleading advertising. Let's sue Nestle. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to make so much money. <laughs> Coming up after the break, should you rake or mulch your leaves out there? We'll get an expert's opinion on your fall cleanup. We'll see you in a bit. We're excited for Halloween. That's no secret here, right? No secret. Except yeah. for the fact that I'm decorating for Christmas. And one of our viewers <laughs> is showing off just how creative their pumpkin decorating skills actually are. We got this message uh, on Facebook from Steph, and she says, Ahoy, mateys. This is my pumpkin submission for our work contest this year. It would truly shiver our timbers if we could get some votes from your viewers. Go to Pike Lake Dental to find the post. Happy Halloween. That is very impressive, uh, but controversial in my life here, Ryan. Why is that? Uh, because Why is it my... controversial? <laughs> because I don't it's like It's a pirates, wonderful pumpkin creation. It is very, very, very good. My girlfriend works for another dental place. Oh. She's a dental assistant. <laughs> Tom Have Dental. So get out there and like that one. Don't like that one. Oh, that's very creative and very talented. Uh, Tom Have Dental. Let's go. <laughs> I would say cut to break, but we just were at break. So. <laughs> <laughs> 
wanted to throw it. That, that is very, that's a, that looks really, really cool. We, so. should, uh, we should just get submissions from all the dental places. Yes. So if you also work at a dental <laughs> office, please send us your uh, information. I'd love to show it off. That's what we call a conflict of interest there, folks. <laughs> it didn't have to be. <laughs> no, it didn't have to be. <laughs> we are definitely missing Briggs. Uh, in the thick of fall and the leaf piles growing out there in the yard, as you get to work out there, raking and removing your leaves reveals a green lawn, but apparently doing the opposite can create one. So John Trappy is a turf grass extension educator for the University of Minnesota. He recommends mulching leaves because you can return nutrients that are important for our lawns or for the trees themselves. So apparently most leaves are about one to three percent nitrogen, which is most important element for plants to grow out there. And similar to wood chips, mulch leaves can help soil retain moisture around your flower beds and your tree trunks and regulate that soil's temperature and stop weed growth. Do you do anything like that for your lawn or anything? My parents sort? have an enormous backyard. Oh my so my gosh. mom in the fall would always have these different piles of leaves uh, and I would go help sometimes. Oh yeah. Uh, but it's so much lawn and oh. you see all those leaves you go where do I even start <laughs> seriously so I live in an apartment right now so I don't have to worry about any of that nice. which is super nice yep at my place uh, there's a certain point where we just stop raking we stop mowing and just let nature do whatever it's doing so our grass is a little long right now mm -hmm. the leaves are all down but uh, I think by next spring we'll have the leaves kind of disintegrated or sure. whatever they whatever whatever and you so call when the it. snow then leaves it's just kind of your yard again kind of the yard and okay. then once you do that first mow it kind of mulches it again oh, and I then see. and then it's pretty much good to go so. i gotcha yeah. gotcha apparently uh wet leaves not good for mulching yeah no what trappy also said it's very very hard that's yeah. for sure but listen if you need a new halloween tradition check out this one over in colorado for the past three decades people have taken part in the running of the emma crawford coffin races in a small colorado mountain town as for how it came to be in 1891 crawford passed away here and following her wishes her coffin was carried 7200 feet up nearby red mountain where she was buried but in 1929 <laughs> get this after harsh winters and spring rains emma's coffin was uncovered and came racing down the mountainside where it was found from by some local children <laughs> can you imagine being a local child in 1929 and finding a coffin that just rolled down a hill so i guess from that uh the emma crawford coffin races were born what a great way to honor emma crawford there folks what That's, she would have wanted <laughs> That's what she would have wanted. That was also in her wishes to come rolling down a hill and then people do a race uh, in her honor here. But that, no, that, that is would pretty be cool. Ultimately terrifying That'd as a child. So. Uh, be sure to join us tomorrow if you still uh, want to <laughs> want to be a Northern Life viewer. As we're going to be getting all dressed up for Halloween. Last year, you remember, it was a lot of fun for us as uh, we went all out. Briggs was a minion. I was a Teletubby. Hunter was a rock star. Yeah. So we'll have our costumes for you coming up tomorrow. So I should get a costume? You should get a costume. Okay, that sounds good. <laughs> Talk to a dental office too. We'll be right back after the break. Welcome back, folks. It's that time of the year because this weekend you're going to want to prepare yourself for an annual change of the clocks. Mm -hmm. Falling behind here, we'll talk about how you can prepare your body and mind for the end of daylight saving time. And as we talked about earlier, it'll be a great day of Halloween fun here in the Northern Life studio dressing up. And uh, like I said before break, uh, I don't know if I have anything quite prepared yet, but we're going to find something and it's going to be a great time dressing up. Do you know what you're going to be yet? I think I do. You I do. think it's going to be kind of a subtle costume, but I think it's going to be a lot of fun. Okay. Yeah. Oh, interesting. Any I, ideas for you? Uh, I, I do have a couple okay. ideas that I can brew in my head and, and make pretty quickly here, but might have to make a quick stop to, to Goodwill or to uh, up, uh, what's that place on top of the hill? Uh, Spirit Halloween. Spirit Halloween. Maybe Target. Like a Target, something like that. So we'll, we'll, we'll find something and that's going to be perfect tomorrow. It's going to be great. We'll see you tomorrow. Hey, happy Halloween. Uh, happy Halloween. But before we go, uh, here's a combo you never knew you needed. Apparently Reynolds Wrap is offering a recipe for espresso martini lovers that can be enjoyed over Thanksgiving coming up. It's a rub for your bird that includes ground espresso and coffee liqueur. They call it the Reynolds Wrap Espresso Turkey Teeny. Uh, they apparently wanted to show that just about any Thanksgiving recipe works well with the ease of Reynolds Wrap. Okay, yeah, that, that's a no for me, Doc. <laughs> <laughs> that's a uh, tough life for that uh, turkey. Yes, you know? it is. Yeah, Oof. Yeah. Hey, well, thanks for joining us. We'll see you again tomorrow. Have a great Wednesday. Find some time to throw a line or just head outside to unwind. That's the life in the great north woods Hike or bike, whatever you like Get out in the day, enjoy the night Yeah, we got the life in the great north woods 
Yeah, we got the life in the great north woods. Yeah, this is northern life.